excellencies, peace and security is a prerequisite for creating an enabling environment for sustainable development across the world. Significantly, Africa has defined security within the context of its peoples, embracing the imperative to fulfill people's basic needs and eliminate poverty, provide fiscal security and public safety, and offer opportunity for the realization of the full potential of its peoples to propel growth and development. This human conception of security necessitates a comprehensive framework that places people at the center of all interventions. It is my hope that this conceptual and operational framework continues to ground Africa's partnership with Europe in the area of peace and security. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I wish to convey the gratitude of Africa to the European Union for the continued assistance to Africa in the pursuit of peace and security. Since 2003, when Europe facilitated the establishment of Africa's peace facility, the EU has worked with the African continent in conflict prevention, peace support operations, as well as post-conflict reconstruction. This has bolstered the capability of Africa to respond to some of the most challenging conflict situations, such as in Darfur and Somalia. Furthermore, the EU has also been a consistent partner in the development of the African peace and security architecture. One of the recent initiatives of note is support in developing the African standby force, including its regional components, which culminated in Exercise Amani in October 2010. The preliminary evaluation of this exercise indicates areas that require improvement, and it is our hope that the EU will continue to support this effort. While we celebrate these achievements, we also acknowledge the challenges ahead, but remain confident that we will together be able to tackle them. In the Horn of Africa, Somalia remains a security hotspot right in our midst. As you are aware, Africa continues to search for solutions to this protracted situation. And in this regard, the Intergovernmental Authority on Development, IGAD, and the African Union summits of July 2010 took decisions that were further elaborated by the AU Peace and Security Council on 15th of, of October this year, calling on the international community to assist the region turn Somalia around. While the United Nations Security Council deliberated on the matter of Somalia on 21st of October this year, we count on the European Union, in particular its members in the U United Nations Security Council, to help generate a resolution that bolsters the capacity of AMISOM to operate more effectively, that supports the transition of federal government, the process of reconciliation, and that also helps to broaden the political participation base in Somalia. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the urgency of the EU support in this matter cannot be emphasized enough in view of coming to an end of the AMISOM mandate in January next year. Challenging the Somalia situation is, AMISOM continues to operate gallantly, and Africa commends Uganda and Burundi for the sacrifice they continue to make on behalf of the world in offering their sons and their daughters to serve under AMISOM. I wish to thank the other countries that have made pledges to support the Somalia operation and urge them to fulfill their commitments without further delay. On Sudan, IGAD and the AU continue to spearhead the various peace processes in that country. As you are aware, the implementation of the Comprehensive Peace Agreement is at a critical stage. As elaborated in the recent IGAD summit of 23rd November 2010, a number of critical milestones have been achieved. We commend both parties for staying the course. However, there are a number of outstanding issues. Some of these require resolution ahead of a January referendum, while others you need dealing with before the end of the interim period in July next year. IGAD and the Africa Union support and call upon the EU to promote the full implementation of the Comprehensive Peace Agreement. In this case, we urge all partners to redouble their efforts towards resolving all challenges in order to ensure the success of this historic agreement. 
In the light of this, the recommendations emanating from the recent IGAD summit provide a good basis for action, especially by our European partners. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, experience in dealing with peace and security issues across the continent indicates that we have been able to achieve remarkable progress by building on the commitment and support of, of regional organizations. It is now clear that given the regional nature of security concerns, collective regional action rather than unilateral or bilateral action is likely to be more effective in addressing such. In this connection, I urge our partners to continue supporting regional organizations such as SADC, ECOWAS, and the others in their efforts to address crisis situations across the continent.